Now let's talk about how do you guys find a place to rent. It's actually way easier than you think it is. I'm about to go out into the street and I'm just gonna show you exactly what you need to do. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need to look online. Please don't look online. When you look online, you are seeing the most expensive points because locals don't really look online for stuff. They just like maybe will do that. But most of the time, you don't need to look online. You can just walk down a street and find plenty of places for rent. The housing market here in Nicaragua is completely different than the housing market in the United States. Here, if you have a US kind of income, then it's really, really easy to afford places that most of the people here can afford. So there's a lot of places available that you're gonna perceive as cheap because you're used to the US. And it's just a matter of looking. Like for most foreigners, they come and they just look at two or three places and they're so blown by how much cheaper it is that they don't get a good deal. But really, if you plan on looking at 10 different places, you can expect to find exactly what you want for cheaper than you expect. It's amazing, okay? So now I'm gonna go in the street and talk to you a bit about what to do to find that rent. Ciao! All right, guys, I am out in the street now. So this is what a kind of nicer street in Managua looks like. Um, a lot of the streets in Managua don't have much trees and stuff, and one of the things I really like about uh, Bologna is that there's lots of plants. Like, basically everywhere you are in Managua, you're gonna have this kind of walled construction where everything has iron bars and that kind of stuff. Um, there's also gonna be lots of taxis passing by, etc., etc., um, depending on how close to the main street you live. This is like... For me, the difference between the areas that feel nice of Managua and the areas that don't feel nice is the presence of trees. That's like the main difference. Because no matter what, you have a bunch of walls and most buildings are way more secure than like what you're used to in the United States, unless you live in like Southern California um, or some, some other of the cities, uh, the inner cities are built like this. Um, you know, you just have to make your houses more protective. Wherever, if you have a house in like a rural countryside area, you don't see as much like barbed wire and big, big intense walls. People have more open property in the US. Whereas here you, you, you don't really see open property much at all. There's almost always some kind of gate or wall. Um, as, even if it's just into the neighborhood, it's a walled in entrance. That's pretty, pretty common. Uh, most of the neighborhoods here in Bologna don't have those kind of entrances, they're more kind of typical where you have like a block, right? But this is uh, one part of Bologna, and Bologna is a pretty big part of uh, Managua. And there's a bunch of different neighborhoods, and they, they vary a lot. Managua is a really, really like interesting place. Um, a lot of tourists don't go there very much. They just go to Managua and then they just leave immediately afterwards. And I really don't. I don't know, I, like Managua is a really awesome place. There's so much here. And of course, like not all locals think that, but who thinks that about a place that they were raised at, right? But all you gotta do is just walk around like this and then look for signs like that, okay? So there's one there. If I kept walking up here, there's another one up over there. And you just call the phone numbers on it. And if you don't feel that comfortable calling them, then you can just text them and use Google Translate. Like you have so many options and finding a place to rent is way easier than you think it is. It's not actually hard. You just think that it's hard, but really as a foreigner, you can just come here, book a hostel, give the airport people the address of the hostel, stay there and while you're at that hostel, which you'll pay between five and $30 a night for, then you're just walking around the street getting numbers from places that you might consider renting. And then all you gotta do is just call those numbers. And as a foreigner, you can rent a property. It doesn't seem to matter at all that you're a foreigner. Some people won't want to rent to a foreigner. But a lot of people prefer to rent to a foreigner because they view you as more likely to pay your rent because you're more likely to have money. So even though you could just up and leave, 
It really depends on the person. And me personally, I've never been unable to rent a place that I was interested in. I've often been able to rent it far, far sooner than I ever expected. Okay? And it really is that simple. You just find signs. This is like a commercial business sign. But you just walk down the streets and you look, especially for handwritten signs. Some of those are the best deals that you can get because they're people who aren't paying real estate agents. They haven't really, they don't have a whole bunch of other individuals with their fingers in the pie, so to speak. Um, they're just families trying to rent rooms or that kind of stuff. Um, and you can find tons of situations. You can get a place for a month, for three months, for a year, for six months. It's all up for a negotiation. So as a foreigner, you'll be able to sign a lease and get on a contract that way. Um, however, you cannot purchase a car. You can rent a car, but you cannot purchase one. So that's important to understand. And aside from that, it's, it's pretty simple, guys. You think it's way harder to find a place to rent than it actually is. It's incredibly easy. You could literally just come to this country, stay in a hostel for like a week, and use that to buy yourself time to find a place. And I promise you, Unless you're in some small beach town that doesn't have a lot of properties, you are going to find a place, especially in Managua. And I, I encourage you to go to one of the places like Managua. Um, if you really want to be around a lot of other foreigners and a lot of other people who are, uh, I don't know how to say it, expats. Like, for me personally, I want to become Nicaraguan. I want to live with locals. I want to, like, have them learn from me and learn from them and become like each other. I don't want to just live in a walled-in community only with people who are also expats or foreigners. I want to be part of this country. I want to be part of this experience. And that's one of the reasons that I make this content, because I want to show you guys what Nicaragua has to offer you. And as a US person, you have so much to lose in the US, especially at least if you're earning money online. By, by changing your country, you can really see that so many of your burdens in your life are actually caused because you don't earn enough money. So when things go wrong, you're screwed and you're forced to do things you don't necessarily want to do or spend your time uh, around people that you don't care for, right? But when you can afford all of your rent and all these things because of work you've done online in the past or because you work remotely and you work from some US company, so $200 a month to rent for you is no problem at all, you're literally living in hard mode. You are spending triple as much money to live for your basics like utilities and rent and food. And you could just not be spending as much money. You could come to a different country, spend twice as often, and still be saving money just because of how much cheaper everything is. And you can say that it's a trade for violence and that kind of thing, but that's just a preconception. The reality is we're all surrounded by death. There are people around us with alcoholism and drug problems and all sorts of tendencies, whether we are in the United States or we're in Germany or England or any of these places, they have plenty of crime and problems. Don't think that, oh, just because it's Latin America, it's all incredibly dangerous. Millions of people live here. And yes, it is dangerous. I don't travel at night. I take precautions, but I love living here. And I chose to come back here after returning to the US. I didn't like it as much anymore. It changed my life completely coming here. And I really want to show you guys that it kind of is that simple. You can just change where you are and you're lonely at first, but you meet new people, especially if you're in a city and young, there's tons of people. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, see you next time. If you guys want to learn more about living in Managua, in Nicaragua, in Latin America, please check out my Udemy course. It's currently available for $10. Uh, this price changes, but the most you're going to be paying is up to 20 bucks. So whenever you look at it in the future, it's going to be between 10 and $20. You're going to get a bunch of videos like this that teach you exactly what it's like to live in Managua, show you utility bills, costs of living, what kind of stores you can go to, examples of those stores, examples of the street, and the kind of lifestyle you can expect living in Managua in Nicaragua as a foreigner. And this is information that you can translate 
to other countries. You don't have to just apply this to living in Managua. But you, what you're going to find is that there's a whole life in Latin America where you can have everything that you need for a fraction of the cost that you currently pay for it. And you don't have to be alone. You can be surrounded by people that you love, respect, and admire if you give yourself the time to set that situation up. The reality is you're living an expensive life, and it's not completely necessary. You can change your geographical location to have more from less money. And it really helps uh, if you're interested in retirement or you're interested in pursuing some kind of self-employment. I also offer consulting. So if you're interested in this course, check out the link in the description or look at the consulting link and you can talk to me about anything. I do accountability consulting, which is where we work to establish a specific thing that you're working on. And I remind you of what past you said you wanted to do. And this causes you to take yourself a little bit more seriously and push yourself a little bit more. But don't worry, it's not stressful stuff. Slow, slow steady steps. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.